Just the sound. Okay. The camera's over there. All right. Well, good evening. Welcome, everybody. My name is Cynthia Cross, and I'm currently the chair of this meeting, which is the meeting of the board of the Transportation Advisory Board for March, the regular meeting. And uh, let's see. Um, calling the meeting to order, and we'll start with approval of the minutes. Um, I'm seeking approval of the minutes by unanimous consent. Hearing no objection, consider the meeting minutes approved. Do we have anybody for public comment? We do not. I don't see anybody here. Uh, OK, well, moving right along, it sounds like we're on to regular business and we'll start with 4A, the tab work plan adoption. And you're going to cover uh, that, John. Yeah, uh, thank you. Chair, uh, so this is the, the work plan as you uh, approved it to go to council in January. Council, they didn't approve it. They were just like, good job. And, and uh, Julian and Cynthia were there to give public comment, or at least a comment regarding uh, TAB and the work plan. I felt like it went really well. There were no hard questions or anything like that. So I would say I think we're good to move to adopt it formally for the year. Uh, so when we do that, we would adopt this formally. OK, well, um, does anybody have any questions about it or the process? Any questions about all those yellow squares? <laughs> um, the code says that we need to pat. We need to adopt a plan and have council adopt it as well. But of course, um, some of the timing for things are a moving project, a moving target, but so that's what the yellow is. But um, did you have a No, I'm just wondering what the yellow is. Oh, it just means it's it's tentative. The schedule, it's less certain that that'll happen on you that. Can see the, uh, oh, they just keep. oh, the legend is. There you go. Um, well, I would entertain a motion to approve the tab work plan for 2024. Anybody want to make that motion? I'll move to adopt the town work plan for four. Do we have a second? Second. Do we have any discussion? All right. Everybody who's uh approved, say hi, Reason. Yeah. All right. That's um and Dave, what about you? Did you, did you get a chance to vote? And you said then the was yes. Okay, well that passes then six to uh, any opposed. Oh, I drink. And uh, that's six zero and the motion passes and the tab work plan is adopted for 2024. And um, we're ready to move on to um, 4B. The uh, bulk of our discussion this evening. Um, am I turning that over to John Mortensen or Greg? You're so good at helping me remember people that are online. Yeah, so, or anybody over here. Anybody, anybody over here. So if you see Dave waving, you know, maybe I should sit in there, but I'll keep an eye on too. Okay. Simon, so it looks like I got the right one. Uh, good evening, Tab. Uh, we're here for our third and final discussion on a six year tip for the years 25 to 30. Uh, this presentation's a little shorter this this week uh, or this month. Uh, we'll go over kind of some highlights from the environmental board discussion we had uh, earlier this month. Uh, then we'll present the draft version of the I guess, I guess just a new project that we're adding that changes to the kit. So. Got a couple questions for you, and as always, feel free to jump in with any other questions along the way or or during the discussion. And then last slide is just the next steps for the tip itself. Purpose of today's meeting is just to give you an update on where things kind of landed after our last month's discussion. Can I just um pause for just a moment and talk about what we talked about in our meeting about the purpose of this meeting. 
because I um, I think when we had our prep meeting with leadership, this did just come out, so we got a quick chance to um, to get it. And maybe I'm kind of splitting hairs here, but in terms of the purpose, in addition to providing us an update, are you not also looking for feedback as you go to council so that council knows that this has been vetted by the tab and that we either yes. have issues with it or we don't have issues with it or we love it or we hate it or at least like knowing what we as opposed to just giving us an update or are we not also providing feedback so that as you take it because they're going to ask right when you take it to the m and i committee yeah. what the tab opinions about it um as opposed to just you're not just providing us an update we're gonna have a discussion about what we'll, we, we'll be having a discussion and yeah this slides doesn't represent that very well but at the end i do actually have specific questions i am looking for feedback on and then anything that along the way of course yeah okay. great okay thanks Uh, so first, I wanted to go over the discussion that we had with uh, at the environmental board, and we actually got a memo. It's in your packet, and I'll pull it up on the screen. It's the last page of the packet. Um, I think it's you know, worth jumping to their main bullets that they presented. Um, first section, they suggested improving the alignment of the TIP environmental criteria with the climate action plan. And I guess I'll just read it. The tab should consider including criteria that better align with the, the climate action plan, specifically ensuring that the criteria that align with the related strategies the climate action plan, which they list with the three criteria in the um, tab should consider criteria that specifically address greenhouse gas emissions through construction and the use of the project as well as resulting impact. This may include consideration for reduced carbon intensity. The pot that results from the project. The board rec board recommends consideration for the integration of the sustainable purchasing policy policy for projects on the tip. Next section was consideration for environment environmental impacts of the projects. The criteria shifted from considering negative impacts of the projects to only looking at enhancement. That was the 4.2 promote environment. We went from project avoids impacts. We changed that to scoring a bit enhanced. Environmental board believes that projects should be scored with criteria on both, whether they're benefiting, enhancing, Critical and natural areas, as well as how projects are avoiding them. And that's the one that I think we had the discussion on because we were going to say it's either one or zero or four <clears throat> passages. And they wanted to have kind of a sliding scale. I suggested at the meeting that it wasn't good because either it meets it or it doesn't meet it. It's not, well, kind of sort of meets it. It either does or doesn't. Mm -hmm. And they seem to be quite vocal that they wanted their opinion to overrule how we were deciding things. So um, I thought that was kind of an interesting comment. And I, I still think that it's it either meets it or it doesn't. And then the last section is consideration for application of the criteria. Board members are concerned criteria are only applied to new priority projects, not <laughs> all projects in the TIP. Board requests that the TAB considers the application of criteria to all projects to support consideration for environmental and climate impacts at all stages and types of projects. Next. 
next bullet is the, the board recommends that TAB consider a sliding scale for criteria in order to look at difference between projects as well as capture ancillary benefit versus intended benefit. Board is concerned that the criteria are very subjective. Consider adding details to the criteria for staff to apply to projects. Last bullet was that the board members flag that projects on the park strategic plan may not necessarily benefit the environment. The criteria should be considered in light of the environment criteria. So any questions, we can jump back to the presentation, come back to this later, get more thoughts. I have a question for you guys. Um, we talked a little bit about this in our meeting, but um, you know, now we have environment, we have advisory board on top of advisory board for administrative action, administration taking something to the to council. So how can we be most helpful? Is it helpful to you as you so as you capture all this feedback, then you take it to council and they're going to read these different memos. Is it helpful for you to hear what we have to say about their comments? Or is it something you already feel good about the way you I, I know we talked a little bit about how you what you thought of some of those comments and how um, some you thought, you know, maybe you were a little bit more problematic than others and um and as an advisory board we don't we're not decision makers we're just giving our advice and so i guess what i'm wondering is do you expect that council will want to hear more about where we're disagreeing or is it really just you're taking this feedback from these different advisory boards and incorporating it and bringing it and have gotten all that feedback because i'm just kind of trying to put myself in your shoes you've got these two different boards giving you advice and there's a little bit of conflict is it helpful for us to dig into this a little bit i guess is when there's an instance where uh, you're soliciting feedback from two boards and you're getting almost kind of like two different directions of or like where we're not in alignment on something like how do you weigh that i guess is my question so i guess kind of going through point by point so the first one was talking about decreasing auto reliance through sustainable land use. And I feel like the other criteria that we have that are not in the environmental credit category touch that. So I don't feel like that needs to be addressed. I know they would like it wrapped up in the environmental category. In my mind, it better aligns with the guiding principles to have it in prepare for growth or wherever it's at. Um, and they had reduced overall auto emission automobile use. I feel like we do have categories that do cover that, and we were just only looking at the environmental criteria. Um, reduce automobile emission by expanding EV infrastructure and helping facilitate the transition to electric vehicles. And so I think that would, if we were considering a project that would expand that, I think it would get the criteria for improving the environment. Um, so I don't know if we necessarily need to do that one. I think it's covered. So I guess the first three I felt like are pretty well covered. Um, the one about the construction materials, I feel like that's outside the tip. That's implementing the projects. Um, the sustainable purchasing policy, <clears throat> Stacy, the staff liaison for the environmental board mentioned how they're just starting to roll that out. So we, I've seen a draft of it, but we haven't really gotten to fully see it. And, but that's also more implementing, not coming up with the tip. And then I think the one about the criteria shifting from avoiding negative impacts to enhancing. I know Greg's got some stuff he's prepared to talk about how scores change. 
and maybe that would be a time for the board to get feedback later on in the meeting about that one. We want to revisit that. Um, I hear what they're saying about adding criteria for wildlife crossings and connectivity. We're trying not to add criteria or criteria. So I feel like right now that's not what we're asking for, but they have mentioned that before. Um, but that's most of our projects. I'm not sure if that's really going to transportation and not wildlife. And we're not really going to have places right. where we have corridor crossings. Yeah, I think. Where that would Our mostly you know, fit in would be where we do this <laughs> passage culverts, but I actually do feel like that does get covered just with the regulation. So yeah. you touch it, you have to do it. Uh, and then the environmental board wanted to look at it for the projects that were underway. And we were focusing on what new projects to add to the tip instead of looking at the projects that are currently underway because we we're not making any changes. Yeah. So it's it's outside of our scope. So I feel like we don't need to address that one. Um, from a staff perspective, I don't think we need to consider a sliding scale unless the tab said we've had a change of heart. We really want a sliding scale. I like the idea of it either meets it or it doesn't because as we're trying to get through all the potential projects, all the potential criteria, it's a lot easier to say, does it meet it or does it not? Instead of saying, well, this project meets it 50% and that project meets it 75%, that would make our jobs a lot more difficult. And there are a lot of, there's so many criteria that we look at that I feel like a good project rises to the top. And the, the two or three points from a sliding scale, I don't think would make a difference. And as for whether the projects in the park strategic plan should or should not be in the environmental criteria, I think it's a, a good criteria. I, I do hear what they're saying. I, I personally don't see a need to revisit it unless a tab member feels, or tab members feel the need to address that one in more detail, but. So I guess in summary, I think when we talk about how we implemented the changes, I think it'd be good to revisit. Do we want to keep the change to enhancing instead of avoiding, or do we want to change it? But we'll actually be able to look at how it impacted projects. Could you say that again? Oh, the, the criteria, I forget what it was, where we changed it from giving points to projects that avoided to giving projects that enhance. But what is your what is your statement about that? So oh, I, I think so. Greg's got some information later on in the meeting about how scores changed. Gotcha. And so I think based on that, if the tab feels like revisiting it, we can talk about it. I see. OK. I think it ties into the last time we were talking about <laughs> the project avoid and it's hard to avoid it. I remember that part. I just wasn't sure what he was saying about that concept. I was trying to figure that out, but I, um, I guess maybe in, so you got through your list, right? Yes. Okay. So would you guys be comfortable saying that we agree, we've read this memo, we hear what they have to say, but we're agreeing with John's justifications on things that you wouldn't necessarily, uh, um, make changes based on their advice. Do we feel comfortable saying that? I, I kind of just, how, how about you? I mean, I think so. But uh, are we thinking like a whole memo back? No, I don't think we need a memo back. I just know that you guys are going to go take this, right. or you, you're going to carry this to the next step, and they're going to say, well, the environmental board said this, and the tab said this, and then and then and then you've got your justification and you've brought that back to us. And I think that it might be helpful for you to be able to say that we hear your justification and support that generally, unless there, unless you don't, unless there's something you you think he's still off and that you. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm kind of on board with what you're saying. And so I I think it might be useful if I were a decision maker to know what these advisory boards that were not in alignment were netting out. And so. That's I'm just trying to get to the 
to the bot side. I mean, I generally think, yeah, I mean, I, I can't agree with the, the thought behind this and the principles behind these uh, suggestions, but um, yeah, like you were saying, I can just convey that over to take out because I'm not, there's not enough time, I think, to like, talk about, like, go with the environmental board and just have a conversation with them about. I no, I don't think it's even worth. I mean, I, I'm just trying to say that they can take that back that they've talked to Tab yeah. and Tab agrees with your justification. Yeah. And I think that's what we're saying. We agree with your justification. I mean, I felt a general comment I felt is the environmental's got their part we're doing, but I felt that they were telling us what we should be doing. That's they want to consider this and this and this, as opposed to our focus on the transportation part. Um, so I think what you were saying is I agree with some of the with what you're saying as far as it's not in our scope to do that. It would cover it in theirs in a way. Um, but not our focus of what we're trying to do from the transportation point of view. Yeah. I agree. I as long as their letter to us is given to the committee, mm -hmm. uh, then I'm comfortable with yeah, your justification. Um, I think just as long as they're like, I do want to like, you know, we don't, I don't think we don't get letters from other boards very often. So I do want to like, you know, give some like weight and some yeah. things for you. But I agree with, um, yes, we, I don't think that we've ever had an instance of us going to another board uh, in a similar manner. And not that we can't do that. I guess I just like this is kind of, I think, unprecedented. So I just, Definitely want to hear it and make sure it's included and it's passed on to the next phase of this. But um, yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. okay. So you will write something up then? To so we'll, we'll, we'll write a staff report that will go to the committee and we can, we'll talk about, there's a section where we talk about how it went to the board and, or different boards. So we'll talk about the different meetings with TAB, we'll talk about the environmental board meeting and how that feedback was incorporated so and then we'll also attach it as well their letter and um, be very transparent about the process and what we took from the different feedback and i think it's nice that we had the opportunity to read it and then provide few feedback before you go and do that yeah. um and i i think that's I think it is unprecedented, but it's also not hard to imagine things like equity and environment that that span a variety of departments and activities. And it makes sense that there might be something something will go out to different boards. But it's kind of nice that it's the, it, the tip is coming back to the tab again, so we get a little more touches, yes. with it, which is great. So I I actually really appreciate that we get to read this hear your justification and have this whole thing come full circle. So I think that timing on that hopefully is not coincidental and that, that it, you know, it seems like this should be the last, it should be the first stop and the last stop for transportation improvement programs, it seems like. Um, so I think that's great. And it may happen again. And I think at the end of the day, we're advisory, we're providing advice and they can take it or not take it. But I, I just wanted to take a moment and have you get the feedback from us that yeah. Hey. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes Dave. Okay. Um, thanks for uh, calling. Me. Let me put my hand down so I don't forget to do that. Um, my my two cents worth is uh, I have no objections to. Um, doing the things that they ask us to consider. But I'm a little bit bothered by that last half of the statement at the bottom. And that seems like the blame game to me, which is please include this letter uh, and that uh, tip to the city council. It's like, tacking a report card onto the bottom of what we do. And it, feel, it feels like you've got one board 
that's trying to check up on the other and you got to do it this way or else. That's what it feels like to me. And uh, that puts an undue pressure on this board. Uh, I think we do a lot of work on the tip throughout the year and uh, we take our, our duties I don't know what the right word is. We th we think we're doing the, what we should be doing as a board, and this feels like we don't think you're doing it as a board, and it feels like a little bit of judgment. Hopefully, you get how I feel. I'm bothered by that last statement because it's like put this with uh, your input on the tip to the city council so that they can see that you didn't do what we ask you to do. I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Let's see how we take it. I think they also, advisory boards must want to be heard too, so I think transparency is good, but I also see the point. Anyway, yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, well, I think we're ready to move along. Thanks. Thanks for letting us digress about that a little bit. <coughs> All right, here's a list of uh, five projects that are uh, included or added to the draft 2025 to 2030 tip. And we'll have slides for each one. Uh, one is the uh, Front Street and Northwest Dogwood intersection improvements. We design. And we have two studies to do. Uh, three trail uh, crossing. East Sunset Way improvements. Corridor design of 220th half Southeast and Southeast 51st Street improvements. And a safety project citywide advanced signage. Uh, and just a slide here to kind of share how we put this together. We updated the language and the scoring criteria used in the MMP as discussed in the previous tab meeting. Um, we have also uh, put it to the CIP color matrix. Uh, and then as we were going through the projects, we were looking at staff availability in terms of what year we could fit in projects, project complexity, whether it big, small, or medium-sized project. We also were thinking about funding opportunities, um, the opportunities for grants that we haven't been applying for or don't have projects uh, lined up for. And also we were kind of thinking about projects that would be competing with our existing projects. So all that kind of helped guide the sequence and scheduling of the projects. And there are opportunities to add some projects as they come up in the future years. Uh, we're not maxed. A couple other conversations we had were uh, near term connections uh, were considered during the process. Uh, it's outlined in the city strategic plan. And we were contemplating adding ITS projects to the tip. However, we need some larger policy decisions. So it was a little too early to add those to the tip, but I'm sure those will be added upcoming years. Any questions on that? Uh, can you give some more background on that last bit of um, those this conversations with city council with us? I'm just not. <laughs> <laughs> no, those are uh, staff conversations. Um, so we we have, we have the list of projects. Um, that were not funded in the previous uh, you know, tip at CFP in 2024. And so I think we'll be adding ITS projects to that at some point, uh, but we don't have projects identified yet. And so we don't have anything to score. So the work that we did on the ITS plan was just an overall plan and it didn't identify, like what I thought well, we were doing the signal boxes and the... Yeah, the, so those are in there. Um, but some of the next phase projects, so like we have a pilot to look at video analytics, but we haven't added 
a citywide video analytics, and we have a pilot for something with adaptive signals, but we haven't looked at the next phase of that. And there are some other ones, I think, maybe look at transit priority signals, but we also want to have a policy discussion on that beforehand. So it's things that we know are upcoming related to ITS, but we're just not ready to outline what those would be yet. But some of the things from the ITS are on here already. That's right. what I think I got confused. So that ITS projects might be more precisely defined as some ITS projects. Because right. I thought I read that to mean all ITS and I was confused because I know there's some of them on here. So got New it. New ITS projects. Got it. Thank you. We're quite literal. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so this slide's on the uh, Front Street and Northwest Dog Street, our intersection improvements. Kind of hard to see the aerial, but you got Front Street going north south, Rainier, um, diagonally, and then Dogwood. And then we all know that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so we got this. In 2028 start design, um, design and eventually construct intersection improvements, realign the intersection, resurface the street. Should they angle dogwood uh, into Front Street and get rid of that? Their nice intersection. I cannot tell you we're going to have to clip that curb with my car. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the evidence on my car, the house to show. Do you have a question? Sorry. Um, uh, just a, you said signal. I was just wondering, um, you're talking about a signal for every. So right now there's a signal there, but it's just for pedestrians. You're saying it's a traffic signal so that um, eastbound dogwood at, making a left out front would have a signal. Yes, so, that would be a four leg intersection. Great question. I haven't thought of the design detail. We identified it. We well, it's been identified as a future project, and we raised it up into the six-year time period. But the details of how to incorporate all the different lengths, we haven't thought of. It, it's going to be complicated Round because up. Round up. I was going to yeah. say yeah. this is the candidate right. for that. Right. That's yeah. getting too in the weeds. <laughs> Well, during the early design phase, we will sort through those details, yeah. and I'm sure if you're still on the tab, we can. <laughs> well, I think maybe the thing is, at some point, we want to make sure the problem statement is understood, like what the goals, and if one of the goals is to make it so people don't have to jump out of the car and go push the door. <laughs> 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 yes, yeah, so until it gets like, go push the button. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is one of the main drivers of is to allow people on Dogwood to be able to turn on to Front Street. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry, I have one more question, and it's a question about all of them. And I did see that you included, which I really appreciate, city planning document identifying the project, and several of them are NA. Um, without going into a ton of detail, could you just very, very briefly say how it did get on here? Because that's very black box secrets. <laughs> yeah, so for this one, it has been a concurrency project. So if we don't do anything at that intersection, so our, the city's level of service that's our adopted standard is at intersections. And when it's stop controlled, the leg that controls it is Dogwood trying to turn on to Front Street. Right now it's at level of service C. And with this project, the whole intersection in 2050 is supposed to be at level of service B. But then if we want to make these improvements at that intersection, it would get even worse for people on Dogwood trying to turn. So it's a, it's a, a concurrency. Yes. History. Yeah. When I'm putting those sheets together, I'm still working on them. So there's a chance some of those yeah. projects are in a, in a planning study somewhere, and I'll find that and I'll add it. Okay. <laughs> still, still working on it. Next project um, at our 
fun intersection uh, we call the three trails crossing. Um, this is kind of phase two of you know improvements at this intersection. Uh, but yeah, kind of similar type project. Rain air ties into Juniper and Gilman. So we'll kind of first look at potential improvements and then then advanced designs. And we don't know like what would be the improvements here, just that it's a project right. to help. Yeah. You know. So on this project, when the city signed a development agreement with Gilman Lofts, it included the scramble intersection and traffic signal. But the project originally had improvements on the south side, and those never were constructed or really defined. So we want to know what do we need to do on the south side of that intersection to make it function better, to make it safer and more intuitive. Stop walking about. Yeah, stop walking. <laughs> right yeah. So far, these are the top two things, and I just like hold my breath while I'm driving for this. <laughs> 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 yeah. It works as a trunk in the morning. Uh, but there are two other intersections that kind of can tie back. So there are some options. Pretty to solve that right now. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, RDS. Um, and then another a study to look at Keith Sunset Way improvements. Sunset Way to the east of front. Um, the, the I-90 limited access. You can identify improvements along the corridor. Pretty generic. Somewhere in <laughs> Sunset through the next intersection up to the light at the. Yeah. Yeah, or thought from Connie about so I had like some questions on I guess like what studies have already been done on this if if there has been any. I know that back in 2016 when the city was going for a bond to fund transportation improvements, and this is for my time. So if I get anything wrong, I apologize because not going based on what I've heard is. There were some considerations for a project on East Sunset Way, and it included widening and I don't know what else. Did. But in the time I've been here, I've seen a number of things come up on East Sunset Way, and it'd be nice to have a plan for how to address them. One of the things that we've heard quite a bit is people in Old Town have a hard time crossing, and they feel like their neighborhood is divided by sunset. And so want to look at crossing. If you've ever sat at City Hall waiting for the 554 bus to come from the Highlands in the afternoon during the school year, you'll notice it gets caught because there's a really long queue waiting for cars to turn left onto second and it blocks westbound sunset. And so cars and the 554 bus, and so I one day was trying to catch that bus and was thinking of this because you can see the bus. It's just stuck there. You can look on your phone app and you can see it's so close, but you're just waiting and waiting and waiting because it's just blocked um, yeah. because so many cars are turning left onto second. And so I think looking at that, looking at the pedestrian crossings, another thing is the city would like to do an east west bicycle connection or non motorized. So it could be bicycle or pedestrian. And whether it makes sense to do it on sunset or a block off of sunset, those are things to consider. But and there could be more things also looking at accident data. But some of the things that I've seen, oh, and we've also heard how important parking is on sunset. So trying to balance all those things, whether it ends up being a corridor project or a series of spot improvements that the city could make, it just seems like sunset's a really important east west corridor. And it would be good to have a plan for how to improve it. I feel like some of the problem, I mean, I'm there like every day coming up from school. I feel like some of the problems also with the intersection right at the library, but wasn't there was also something to fix that in the tip, right? So on the other side, like at first, um, the, the fish hatchery. 
the one right here, this intersection with the library and then the sunset. The library and the gas station right at that intersection. Yeah. Oh, front and sunset. Yeah, front and sunset. Yes. That's, that intersection, I feel like part of the problem with sunset backing up is that left of turn lane, but then also that light. I feel like sometimes it's like barely any cars end up getting through the light going towards um like towards the if you're looking at the photo towards this way on sunset or south to make it that look yeah. pretty south yeah i feel like no cars end up getting through there because front street's all backed up sunset's all backed up and then like people at my school can't drive so they like don't see that the light screen and stuff like that <laughs> that's just another problem yeah so before we do this study we do actually have a project at the intersection of mm -hmm. Sunset oh, okay. that we'll work on can, doing some signal changing changes. And it, that project came out of two things. One, it was originally a concurrency project that was just in the future years, mm -hmm. sitting, waiting. And then we did a transit study where they said, hey, this intersection is slowing up the bus. And they basically identified the same concurrency project that we have. So we'll look at that intersection actually before we look at the rest of East Sunset. Right. Lots of work on Sunset. So they look at that intersection and they're going to do timing changes. Could they also look at a scramble or something like that at that intersection? Yes, we, we, I think that is something that we should look at. I, so we did a corridor study with the Front Street and Isqua Hobart Road back in, I want to say, 2018 or so. And it looked at it and it recommended not doing a scramble. And in 2017, we did a front street streetscape plan that recommended looking at a scramble. And I think it, when we're going to touch it, we should definitely look at it because we've heard from enough people that it would be a good location for it. Whether it would or not, I don't know, but it's something to be considered. I don't know what a scramble is. I just looked it up. It's like that giant one that's in Japan. So a scramble is where they, uh, the traffic moves and no pedestrians move. You have all the turning movements and then all traffic stops and then pedestrians can then walk. Or when you correctly do that or they walk. I wonder what they have at the Bellevue Transit Center. Um, at the Bellevue Transit Center, the same thing where all traffic stops and people can go all sorts of At the three trails. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, right here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I never heard the term. Yeah, <laughs> and the Santa Monica Pier has one too. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Although they have a lot more pedestrians. Yeah, I've been there. Okay. It really implies like it's like you've got just, <laughs> yeah. but I'm guessing that's the city is able to. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, they're usually nice long signals. Grandma's got enough to get across the street. Yes. Yeah. 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 A long way. The hypotenuse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you have to hold the answer. You will lose people. The next project is a, a mm -hmm. wrap tip is 220th and Southeast 51st. And slated for design in 2028. And this project will either construct out was identified as a full course street section in the 2023 uh, Squaw Street standards, or we'll look at doing interim bike lanes via road diet uh, the 20th and Southeast 51st. For orientation, the South uh, East Lake Parkway on the yes, right. Northwest Sands on the bottom. Yeah. yeah. I think the courthouse and the yep. FedEx. Okay. Usually when I'm there, it's not that busy. Oh. I didn't really see this as important. Well, in our I-90 crossing study, they had a heat map of bicycle activity. And this corridor has a lot of bicyclists going through. Mm -hmm. And there's a development it's going to be building the frontage and putting in a bunch of townhomes just south of 51st. I didn't know what it meant. So that's an office building now? Five. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we use the, the, the intersection that's right down in the bottom right corner. That's the one where people have been killed at. 
that right. was very dangerous intersection. Yeah. So we've actually used that as a road for biking just to avoid. Yeah. So is that, yeah. that is part of what this might be addressing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I tend to, when I'm coming down from Resnick, for example, I tend to just take that road yeah. instead and go, go through that way. Take the roundabout, keep going that way. Yeah. Instead. So this will be a very viable project. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And we left the either statement because it's one that probably would be good for a grant where we could actually build out the full section. But if we couldn't, it also looks like this would be an affordable, easy one to add really high quality bike facilities without spending a lot of money. So it's one of those things, if we can get some extra funding, we could do quite a bit, but if we don't, we can still make an improvement. So could that be like a pedestrian bridge on our side of, oh, I forget the name of it, the, the right to left uh, there. Because you come underneath the bridge in the back of a round, and then you have to be on the sidewalk. So we're to that pre-intersection. section. It would be great if there could be like a oh, pedestrian bridge there to connect over to the other street. Jot that down as my idea, or ideas of potential other projects, or whether we could incorporate it. That might be. But yeah, because I've used that bridge that goes underneath 56 through Northwest Sam. It's a lot easier to cross there than to do the crosswalk at East Lake. Um, I have a question. I don't get the reason to have 10 years for such a project. Is it driven by cost or is it? 10 years for, for a project that's a, it says here like starting year, year. 2028. Oh, yeah. oh. Yeah. Again, I, I wouldn't put too much stock in the completion year. We're kind of. If we have to kind of chase grant funding and around, then it could take a while. Especially if we're doing the interim bike lanes and how to go off with it. So, so there will be construction for 10 continuous here in that location? Yeah. It would be starting design in 2028. Like I didn't put a whole bunch of thought into the completion here. It's just kind of, I guess, we don't have like a schedule built out for this. But if we wanted to do a full build out, of the project, we'd have a few years of design, we'd have a few years of getting property rights, and then a few years of construction. So I, I'm just start to finish. Potentially, it sounds so. like it's kind of the speed of completion is contingent on whether or not grant funding is pursued. And right. It could be speedier if the city just decides to forego that, try to chase yeah. that down. Yeah. But it's cheaper. Right. Do. I think whatever we end up doing, 20K to like potentially save lives is a steal of a deal. <laughs> so in general, is it can you do a project faster <clears throat> if you get state grant funding or federal grant funding, or does it make a difference? State would be a lot faster. Kind of set a time frame. Yeah. Well, just if you have the month funding for it. So do it. Yeah, and you don't get hung up on environmental review, which, well, you still have an environmental review, but when you get to the federal environmental review, you can hang up like Newport Way, Maple to, not Maple to Sunset, Newport Way, SR 954 was delayed for two and a half years for review by the National Marine Fishery Service. Ironically, because of concerns about salmon, and then a resident actually sent us a video of a salmon unable to get <laughs> past a culvert, which would have been replaced by the project. <laughs> and then our last project we've identified is the citywide advanced signage uh, project in Stalls advanced warning signs primarily at priority curves throughout the city. This was a newer project that the 
local safety uh, plan that was recently done found uh, trends where accidents were occurring, possible mitigations for that. So I'll put this project in. Did we do was the local safety plan presented to TAB at all? And I'm just no, it was just done at a staff level. And so it was a process of looking at all the different accidents over the last, say, five years and identifying characteristics of roads that had those accidents. And one of the things that stood out were accidents on curves without warning signs in other areas. So are we imagining different uh, treatments that just these yellow signs, as in uh, you know, there's some some of the signs I've seen, you know, they can detect a car coming up like a massive speed and they just flashing uh, on the edges. Um, there are different signs and techniques which I've read about some literature. Those are, tend to be a little more effective in terms of capturing people's attention. So, or imagine like different treatments or just you know, signs. That's a good question. I, it could be other treatments. I don't think we've got much other than we've just identified a, a problem that we want to solve. And the exact solution could be warning signs. It could be something else. For example, we had one curve we actually looked at where cars were rolling. And once we looked at it, we actually installed more warning signs that cars are still rolling. And then we realized it had a compound curve. And so we're actually going to change it to get rid of the compound curve. So I would say the solution isn't defined, but <clears throat> the problem is identified. And what's the compound curve? So I'm kind of aware. Yeah. So when you have, so when you do road alignment, you'll have a straight section, you'll have a straight section, and then you have a curve in between. And nowadays, if you were to design it, you would have a, a radius, that'd be the same radius for the whole curve. Oh, so basically it's like, it's like a turn. Changing radius. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah exactly. So the radius is changing. Right. Yeah. And sometimes if you have a, Sharper curve into a big curve, it's a little bit better gaining sensation, but it's hard. Like if you take the ramp right up to the high ends, yeah. that's a large curve into a very quick short. Oh, yeah, that really is. Where you it's kind of set the rate coming up and also like it's written. Yeah, that's an yeah. example. Oh. Yeah. 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 Back at our discussion tab. Um, I'm guessing with the signs that this like two grand cost would go up if uh, we have the like flashing beacon signs instead. Those are maintenance costs that we identified. Yes, that was what's going through. Yeah. So the two grand, that's not necessarily the cost of installing the signs or maybe the graphic all upgrade. So we need an ongoing. But if you did have those flashing edge signs, flashing edge yellow signs, um, then the main cost would be a little bit higher to get the other yeah. main things. Yeah. Get the PSE bill every month. Yeah. That's what this is also the 20,000 for this. Yeah. Year to maintenance. Could do a solar panel on it. Let's get it. We actually have decided not to do solar panel in Issaquah because we have too much trees, mountains, and clouds. And so from a, we don't want to rely on a safety feature being covered <laughs> by the sun. But it is possible to have that electricity being supplied from PSC, which can be renewable. I think so. It's what the environmental board cares about. <laughs> and us. Maybe it's a little bit about another 50 years when we get sun all the time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, I do have the scoring sheet that I can kind of show you the differences, or I guess some of the changes in scoring based on. Mm -hmm. Do that, or we can go to questions really quick. Looks like the signing is a pretty easy, straightforward. That's the very easy, straightforward. For the other sparks construction is more of installing the sign at different locations, which would be something that would be pretty straightforward to do. So that would be an easy one to forward it. The other one take a little bit more of uh, sign public comment. But yeah. Yeah, there's one the intersections in this point. Who can make it pretty? <laughs> yeah. I personally would rather we come back to this and do what you just suggested. So he's talking about how the criteria that we worked on changed, right? Isn't that what you're saying? Yeah. Here's the notes to help highlight it. Um, the biggest changes that we made were to the promote environment, which is 4.12. Point three is part of so change that. Four point two was we went from a project scores four points if it doesn't have any impacts to the to it gets points. And we were struggling to identify any projects that we want for us to do that have enhanced the environment. Some of them do it in some ways, but on the aggregate, I don't think we ended up with any projects at ah. four points. All Interesting. I pointed out a couple of the projects that we've been talking about. Which ones are they? So the, for example, the three trails crossing, um, advanced signage, those are the two. Those would have you know, scored four points because they're not harming, they're not harming the environment. But it's a good question. It's like, are we promoting the environment by only installing signs that deserve environmental points? So just because they didn't score points doesn't. Did that one, did we change it to like zero being like no, no, nothing? And then four being like it enhances it and then like nothing in between. Zero and four. Oh, okay. Well, it was that way before. Um, we changed the language. Uh, there was 4.1 had a two point that we removed. Um, I wish it had criteria. That one had like a two point if we were moving single occupancy vehicles to off mm -hmm. hours, not uh -huh. peak hours. Oh, okay. Um, and that none of the projects had two points previously, so we didn't have to remove any projects that had two and zero. Okay, so it's mainly 4.3, that's the issue. Uh, or 4.2, sorry. 4.2, um, yeah, just uh, showing what, it, what the change is. Uh, 4.1, um, that was the one that was changed. I was more focused on Multimodal type projects only. Oh, we made it so it helped and capture a project that would reduce vehicle miles traveled. I think we narrowed the, we simplified it to place the project. All right, I, I can find it if we want, but uh, I guess my note on that one was yeah, a lot of our multimodal projects were very well in that bike and pedestrians, and then also a couple of our projects that didn't have any points. Now score four, those are in central as a car. Those are the kind of new connections identified future. Okay. Those ones, I think uh, their names are pretty short. A lot of numbers.
can change the language on 1.1 a little bit. Didn't have a big effect on this one. However, I just wanted to point out that I think the intent is that we every couple of years are updating our local road safety plan and it does identify projects and those projects score very well. Because I think we added language that staff is going to have an input on whether or not this project would have if a project could be identified by public and verified by staff. Local safety plan helps us with that. The question about the Squid Pine Lake Road improvements, I believe, as it is a four lane road at this point with the roundabouts and bike lanes in there. Is this a new project that is expanding that? Well, I think you're thinking that it's by all city road. Oh, it's all city. Yeah, so this is the one where if you're Let's just say you're heading up from East Lake Sammamish Parkway and you go past the turn off to the Highland and you get to the traffic signal where you turn left onto Issaquah Pine Pinelink Road to go into Sammamish. And once you get to 48th, it switches where it's no longer a spot, it's then in Sammamish. So it's a project that's been a concurrency project for years that would improve that section from 48th to Issaquah Paul City Road. Is that on here? It's a future year project. Oh, we don't have. That's not OK. Yeah, it wasn't one we were considering for inclusion in the six year part of the pit. This was one where I was kind of thinking. Um, for the promote environment. Maybe uh, like there's a benefit by getting the curb and gutter and conveyance system for the stormwater. And I was looking around at it and be taking out a lot of trees, slopes, curbs. I had a hard time giving <laughs> this point for <laughs> promoting environment. Yeah, so it looks like it runs off yeah. the natural swale, which is good. question but uh, do you guys have oh. um I have I just can get my head around that these priority projects like the three four projects and it would take 10 years to be sorted as they are a priority so that's a very long time to benefit or solve the problem and benefit the community so I don't understand the reason. So I'm coming from a place where we used to finish projects in like a couple of years. Definitely it's the, the financials or but 10 years that that's a very long period. I think most of the ones that we're looking at would not take that long. I think it's more of assuming delays and stuff, but for most of them. I would anticipate two years of design if they require right of way, two years of right of way, and then a year of construction. So that would be five years. Now, if it doesn't require right of way, then you're looking at probably three years for a project from start to finish. That if you don't have something trip it up like an unusual environmental view. The design is always fixed. As an extended period of time because of that. Uh, the permit environmental yeah. Yeah, process. Yeah. Yeah, and there's also things we have to build in, like contracting. So when we go, if we design it in house, then we don't have to. But if we end up hiring a consultant to design it, then we, it, from the time that we say we're going to hire the consultant to when we actually execute the contract, it can take up to six months. And then you go through the process and then you got to go through permitting and then you're looking at a eight week review period for your first review that's or a six week review period for your second. It's it takes longer than I always think it should. Yeah. 
I would expect the funding to be the main factor, but other than this, everything should be like you have your own consultants, you have your own contractors, you already have the prices, just get things up and running. Or the finance is the, the main dragon thing. Yeah. Does that answer your question to some degree? Five years better than ten years. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So I was just a little bit curious about, I guess, about the process and about um, making the sausage here. So these are the new projects um, that went on to the tip this cycle. Did anything come off that after, as is either a result of these rankings or this exercise? I mean, of course, these are, I mean, I don't know about. You guys, I think these are great projects. They seem very consistent with MMP principles, and I mean, we can talk about that too. But I'm curious about trade offs. So, did something go away? Did we get more money? Like, how do we just add, or, or do we finish other projects and there's just opportunity to put more on? Like, yeah, so the, the CIP was really focused in on, a, well, it was six years, it focused on a shorter window. So we had capacity for projects from 28 through 2030. And at the same time, councils added a lot more positions. So we used to, when I started at the city, oh, more we had staff. Right, two engineers to manage projects. Now we have four engineers to manage projects. And taking advantage of that extra capacity, we're like, okay, what can we get done that aligns with the guiding principles of the mobility master plan? And so we basically got a whiteboard just very similar to that one. We just drew columns for the years. We knew how much capacity we had to do projects. And we looked at what we already had. We did not take anything off. And then we identified, okay, do this here. And we knew how many projects we could take on in each year. And then we looked at this big spreadsheet, updating the points, seeing how the different projects scored. And then looking at it, of uh, does it make sense to do this project at this time? Like the projects that build a grid in Central Isla, a lot of that will be done in conjunction with redevelopment. And so I didn't feel like the city should be firing right away through a private property when the likelihood that that private property will redevelop and they'll construct that street. And if it's going to be a project that's really expensive and going to actually take 10 years that we did not want to do that project so we wanted to look for projects that we could implement more quickly than other ones so we didn't want to take on another newport way maple to sunset because that's a project that's going to take decades to complete and so the master project list the future year project list so do these forgive me for not i don't have it memorized did, how, did some of these come from Get moved up from future year projects, or do they get conceived of in this last cycle? Are they all most of those are were from the basically the foundation was we took the at the end of the CIP. There's future year projects. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Those that was where that was the project list, and then if we had a couple of new projects, that, for example, the citywide advanced signage, that's a new project. There's a couple of new projects, not a lot. And then we just kind of just scored the future year project. And was there anything that was close that didn't make it on here? I would say the one that was closest and didn't make it on was Northeast Gilman. We looked at doing some sort of road diet to add bike lanes on Northeast Gilman. But then we get started saying, well, it also has sidewalk gaps. and it has poor lighting and we added it as a future year project, but knowing that could be one that could actually be a, an easy win to create a connection. But we said not at this time, but it's one we did add to the future year list and it was a brand new project that we conceived. And why didn't it score as high? 
Oh, it, it scored great. Um, <laughs> Why did it make it? I mean, <laughs> we wanted to, there, there's more issues than just trying. It ended up growing to be a more complicated project. It was scope creep. It was yeah. getting too complex. Okay. Yeah. So we added to, to the future year so we can define the scope and potential to do it. And, but we said not at this time for the six year period. Gotcha. But it made it, it was a new project onto the, the future project. Right. Last. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, do we think that these projects are um, consistent with the goals and the policies laid out in the MP and that we've talked about? Generally, I would say so. Um, they all seem to address multimodal aspects. I'm still curious a little bit about the three trails cross thing and what that's going to specifically address. Um, but other than that, you know, the Sunset Way, whether it's bond movements or the whole corridor gets fixed up, having a bike corridor through there, improving the transit uh, flow through, those obviously match up with principles of the MMP. Um, ideally, it's a whole corridor project rather than the spot improvements or um, improvements on the side streets. Um, and then the 220 project, you know, obviously very, seems very important for folks. Um, that's obviously a, a really good alternative route that people take when they're coming from Redmond or they're going up to Redmond. Uh, I see why the advanced signage addresses the safety issue. Obviously, it would be good to have other treatments other than just these yellow signs. Uh, that really make it make sure that people are that people are paying attention to those things. So, generally, I think these do match up with the other things. Not seeing anything that is flagrantly like this. Yeah, absolutely, is out of line. Well, that's. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think this, I guess that kind of answers yeah, the process of this stuff through the tip. Um, I was kind of looking for feedback on kind of this three meeting approach and I introduced it through languages back to get your feedback on. This process was for you guys so that there's opportunities for improvements in future years. I mean, I, I did enjoy particularly Heather's meeting. That was really a good conversation that all of us had about the guiding principles and the um, objectives slash goals. So I appreciate that Heather meeting that part of the process. Um, so that's something that's definitely can come back uh, in future years. Uh, so that's my that's my take. Um, that I very mean really well. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Go ahead. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. There we go. Sorry about that. Um. I've been quiet for a while. I can answer that first question, especially about the Northeast Dogwood Street and the impact. Do I think it'll be impactful to the community? Absolutely, that project. Uh, Roberta and I lived on Northwest Dogwood Street for 17 years. I can tell you the most impactful things that has happened past. Um, I know Cynthia has lived on Northwest Dogwood Street for a while, but I think I capture the time and the uh, probably the most impactful thing that happened on Northwest Dogwood Street was the new bridge in 2015. 
um, and uh, complete street, which gave us the widening and the sidewalks and the lighting. Th those things that we received were extremely impactful uh, to all the residents. The thing I really see with that widening up at the top, at front is if you go up there on the wrong time of day, you can sit at that intersection for 15 or 20 minutes to make a left or a right onto uh, Front Street, or even if you're making a left on Rainier, the most impactful thing that will happen to that intersection is to put in a light other than that pedestrian light, because that will allow traffic on Dogwood Street to merge. I, I'm to turn. I have seen it to the point, especially during rush, rush hour, that Dogwood could back up all the way to the bridge because people can't move. So do I believe it'll be impactful? Absolutely. And the sooner, the better. But I moved to Providence Point, so I ended my impactability uh, by moving up here. And I mean that as a joke. but. Truthfully, uh, everything in that project is going to impact the residents of Dogwood Street. Uh, and it's only during rush hour, whether it's the morning commute or the evening commute. Uh, like the rest of the senior citizens in Issaquah, we don't come out of the house till 10 o'clock in the morning to go anywhere. And we don't stay out any longer than three in the afternoon because it becomes uh, a stigmata where you're just stuck. So do I believe that's going to be impactful? Without a doubt in my military mind, that will have major impact for the residents on Douglas Street. That's that uh, impactability on um, Southeast 51st and 220th. I really believe that's going to have a major impact too. So there wasn't one thing that popped up there that uh, I don't concur with and feel as a TAB member that it will uh, be impactful to the community. Um, East Sunset Way, I know people on East Sunset Way that that's going to, in, fa uh, in fact, as a TAB member, I got a call from a couple individuals that felt like anything they did is going to make it better. And I want to throw in something else that you guys may not be aware of. It's huge. None of you have driven the 554 up and down East Sunset Way. I have. Okay. And I can tell you without a doubt in my mind that when, like John described, when you're sitting there and you can't move and you are a driver and or a passenger, you feel trapped. Well, let me tell you what that does to the Metro schedule and the sound transit schedule is if you can't move, you lose your break and you lose your turnaround time so you're automatically going to be late the rest of the night because you can't move. So uh, I get it. You guys don't care about that. But boy, I care about that as a former driver because you can't pick up people. Then the dependability of Metro service is impacted greatly. So first and foremost, I would vote as a tab member that all of those new um, projects are going to be impactful to the community. And with that long uh, iteration, um, you know my vote, and I thank you for your time. Thanks, Dave. I think we do care. I think it's great that you're here to remind us things we hadn't thought of. So I appreciate that. You got something? Like? No. Oh, okay, good. Uh, well, 
I mean, I don't think we're going to be. We're not approving this. We're just giving you our feedback, but right. I think you're hearing that. Is there anybody that has anything else to say or add or any thing besides it? I mean, we didn't do the scoring. I didn't do the scoring. I didn't, you know, compare what didn't get done, but I mean, I'm personally I'm pretty supportive of these. Anybody else have any comments? I mean, I'll just reiterate, like, my preference is five years down the line, I guess. Um, you know, when it comes to 220, uh, you know, interim bike lanes would be uh, incredible to implement as a stopgap, um, if that's possible at all, uh, before building out the whole four streets uh, grant funding. That's uh, would be my preference. Um, that's anyway elected. Um, and then on East Sunset Way, to have that the address in the corridor manner, like full corridor manner, uh, cohesive. Um, like facility there to have cohesive uh, signal time with the transit system there. Uh, and I think it would be nice to have like a mixture of both that corridor improvement and improvements on the side streets, uh, because so that's also important for residents there as well. Um, and obviously sufficient crossing uh, opportunities across that sunset. Uh, and obviously to go further on the advanced side uh, than just the other sides. Sure. So, those are just my preferences. Um, yeah, I'm just circling back to Connie's email and maybe I should have followed up with her about, uh, sounds like it was, yeah, buzz around East Sunset earlier at some point, uh, and, uh, she highlights the need to protect the trees on the street. So, um, and just, I know it's in the packet of like, it will include robust community involvement as of possible competing interests. So my concern with that particular project, but someone like you has said so. Uh, the light turning on to second is like the fastest light. You just have to go, like, yeah, like, <laughs> you cannot hesitate because it'll just turn straight to like flashing yellow instead uh, to turn up to second there. So it's late, many a Sunday morning for church. Thanks. Anything to add? Uh, no, I think what everyone said as far has been good. Um, that uh, intersection with Dogwood and Front Street, I think that'll be a big improvement because that, like, even going on Front Street there can be sketchy because cars also turning left off of Front Street. It's narrow there, so I don't know, like, having probably better better signals and stuff, so traffic's just more controlled generally through there will make it safer for the whole community. Yeah. Oh, I'm good. Um, as long as you're on the diving a little deep, um, and I know this is premature, but just is I also am agree with Avi at the front street and dogwood intersection would be really great. I just want to um, throw out one other additional thing to consider for the problem statement, and that is that um, the Rainier Trail is a great place for kind of cruising around on your bike. You, you don't really want to go to Front Street, um, and so you're just trying to get through there. And then when you cross, when you're on Rainier and you're headed north, and then you come to that intersection, and then you cross, you get spit out into there, and you got to pick which poison you want to then get onto Dogwood. Yeah. So yeah. I just want to, yeah, the, the bikes are left hanging at that intersection. They're spit into it in a very, yeah, yeah dangerous. Yeah, it's a mess. So I just want to kind of add that to the problem statement to okay. that intersection. That's very good. And I'll add in my conversations with the Parks Department, they're really wanting to put some emphasis on the Rainier Trail. And so I think this is a project that can help enhance one of their goals too. It probably as a Highlands resident, I would point out that Rainier not too many of these are focused on that neighborhood and maybe that's a good thing maybe it's, it's 
just don't have that many problems to solve up there, which is great. Um, but yeah, just looking. I mean, and some of these are like it's the north end of town, obviously, with two right. different, but I know it's that's a specific. You know, there was one we looked at, and that is to put a traffic signal at Park Drive and the road to Central Park. And in order for the Parks Department to fully utilize Central Park as one of the land use conditions from one that was developed, a traffic signal needs to go in there. Now, it doesn't score well, and it's so it doesn't score well with the guiding principles of the mobility master plan, but I still also will acknowledge that there's other things to consider because while maybe it's not a mobility project, it's a project that allows the park to reach full potential. And it's also one that will be hard to fund because I don't know of any grants that would pay for it. So then it's one that the city would be hurting away from that. Yeah. I'm going to keep that curtain away from yeah. that. Then I guess the other thing with the Highlands, because Highlands was created in 1998, is it is a newer neighborhood and so it doesn't have some of the legacy problems. But I imagine sometime in the future we'll start having a lot more projects up the Highlands. I just want to go on kind of those, the last tip or something we covered uh, painting the signposts i know that was like the paint yes the yep that was in there yeah like i know that they're not been in the past so i'm yeah. not real concerned it, about it but just... yeah and we have done a lot of work up in the highlands that have not risen to the level of a project so for example the zipper merge on park drive we read it about six years ago and then we still get complaints about wrong way drivers in the highlands but we tried um we put down those reflectors so if you put if this is a reflector and you would normally have white for your line, then we put red on this side. So if you turn the wrong way, you'd see red. Right. Oh, that's super cool. I've never, I wouldn't know that because yeah. I didn't <laughs> <laughs> That's a great thing. <laughs> now I try. <laughs> but yeah, so in the Highlands so far, it's been mostly small things like that that haven't risen to the project level. But I imagine as the neighborhood ages, that there will be projects. Okay. And a lot of those funny educated public, that, that's what they mean. It pulls them drive down the road like, wow, these are all red. That's weird. <laughs> 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 it's the only complaint of note that I've gotten is about this, and I emailed John about this, and I still need to submit it to the find it fix it. Is the um, power box getting hit uh, in that little island? Yes. There. And that's happened a few times. And my power, everyone's power goes off, the fire alarm goes off in my apartment. It's been, yeah, it's a whole protocol, but that's. Very specific. And we are aware of that one. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Sweet. Well, did you get what you, uh, did you get some good information from us? Yeah. yeah. Information from us? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Good. Okay. Hey, sure. We got the MMI meeting. Uh, oh, Dave's got days. a hand up. Sorry, oh. Dave. Do you have your hand up? Uh, I, keep myself muted because this chair I'm in, which is very comfortable, squeaks and I'm the, it hasn't got the grease yet. So I try to keep myself muted. Uh, John, I, I told you earlier, I was at the park board meeting last night, uh, trying to get the update on Veterans Memorial Park, which is uh, coming. They've almost got approval, but I, one thing, I want to share, you're absolutely correct on the trail uh, by the park on the, no, God, I love being old. I can't remember the name of it, but the one right off of Juniper there um, and Rainier Avenue. Oh, Confluence Park? Yes, and you're absolutely correct that they, the, um, they're doing everything they can to get uh, some help on parks. That that was attested last night. But I have to tell you something funny that happened. Jeff was talking about 
that Issaquah is not going to be known as a one dog park town. <laughs> now I've heard of a one horse town. <laughs> heard about a one dog park town. But he attested to that fact that we will not be known as a one one dog park. Uh, both Robert and I actually uh, had to constrain our laughing because we were in uh, the room there and uh, but it was funny and it's true so if you take anything home from tonight uh, we won't be known as a one dog <laughs> 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 Future dog parks. Okay. Beyond the one that's in for permitting right now. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, that's all I got. I just wanted to share. We got an MI meeting on uh, May 14th, and a public hearing June 3rd, and then we'll have to pass the vote out on June 17th. Right. May 14th. The uh, council. I was going to say it doesn't hurt to have us there. Um, oh, I put it on my calendar to hold for that meeting. I'm happy to attend. Does anybody else want to? Is it you say? Just in case I have questions. Um, just kind of nice to follow your the work yeah see it go through it reminds me of that remember that old school of rock or whatever school schoolhouse rock i'm just a bill I just like and then you're like yeah. <laughs> i'm just a plan i just want to see it go through the system. <laughs> um program dave go for it um did you cynthia did you want us at that may 14th meeting uh yeah. Uh, I, I think that anybody who wants to attend should come. I think it's just what we can, and as long as there's not a quorum, so four of us could attend. Um, well, I'm just thinking uh, as a learning aspect that we'd be there to see, you know. To hear them discuss it. Correct. Yeah, I would, how about if we do this? Anybody who plans to or would like to attend, send a note to John, this our John, and um, if you see that there's too many, don't okay. oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, don't send it to me. Send My husband's name is also John, so I think <laughs> a lot of John. So we can't um, have a forum there. Is that the we can't. Uh, we'd have to post it. Was it really? The whole reason why we can't hang out is how I guess it would Yeah. <laughs> so if there's, I, I mean, I'd be surprised if more than four people want to attend. It's not to say anything, it's just to simply be there and observe. I think that probably it's it just simpler if it's not a quorum. If and so if more than I think anyone who wants to come should come. Let John know you're coming. If you get if you count more than four heads, then um, let us know and we'll somebody will probably yeah. So we can just come as a citizen as opposed to that member. I mean, technically we should be able to come as a citizen, but I'm not going to even approach that. Uh, it's too. Uh, yeah, it just makes people's you lives. Me down that I'll be there, please. Did you catch that? He said he put him down for he'll oh, be there. Yeah, Is that an invitation or do you have some that you're preparing? Have you prepared? Oh, nope, that's it. That's okay. it. These are my last question. So we have okay. to uh, Well, the, with that, it sounds like we're ready to move on from there. Is that right? Yeah, okay. So um, good. Well, we're doing pretty well on time. Uh, good. Okay. So we're on to reports. Um, do you want to talk about the board work plan? Uh, yes, because there's some updates to it already. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So board work plan. Um, so next month, David Reedy, the sustainability coordinator, will be presenting the 2022 greenhouse gas inventory that was scheduled for uh, May. We're just bringing it forward a month because it's 30 minutes of our time. Just want kind of get it out of the way and he's happy to come. And then uh, I will be uh, presenting on traffic calming. Uh, so I'll be bringing some questions about specific issues we should be considering as we craft the policies implementation structure 
Um, so the policy itself that I sort of alluded to that we'd be, I'd be bringing next month, we're, we're going to push that back and we'll be we'll bring it back on a subsequent month. So but what will we be doing? We'll be talking about some uh, kind of specific questions uh, as we develop the policy as opposed to looking at the policy. I see. Gotcha. Okay. That's it for the board work plan. Do you have a staff report? I do. <laughs> I have a lot of stuff. To do. Um, so uh, I reached out to Thomas Beldriz in the planning transportation planner. Um, asked him because he brought the comp plan back in October and I realized I hadn't followed up with him. Um, so basically he said he's been getting feedback on draft elements from agencies and addressing comments. Uh, he will start putting together together images and visual aids for drafts beginning in April. Uh, so that's that. And then uh, I know last month I said I would be reaching out to you all for uh, to tab check ins and I didn't do that. So I have have a reminder to uh, start doing that tomorrow. So I will reach out to you. All. So that's the staff report. Great, thanks. Uh, the only thing about the chair report is I do believe that April marks the Final month of the term for a couple of us terms are expiring. So it's um, and then it's also every so our three year terms. Some of us are expiring. Some we're not expiring. Our terms. <laughs> 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 um, and we'll talk about that next. Uh, and then um, it's also just a reminder that the chair and vice chair seats get revisited at the same time. So May will be the first month of the new chair and vice chair. If that's something you're interested in, you can nominate yourself. You can call a friend and ask a friend to nominate you. Um, but the chair and vice chair uh, will be then revisited in May. And I've been the chair for a couple of years, so it's time for somebody else to um, take that role. Well, I believe in rotation of leadership. So, you mean a random friend or a friend on the board? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so I forget what we figured out with the. Uh, the timing is exactly yeah you it will be decided in may and it could be you could nominate in may you can nominate on the spot so there's no need to for advanced planning however if you plan to nominate someone else you may want to check with that person to make sure they'll accept the nomination and there was a point several years back where we asked people to submit a, like a little one pager and everyone got to read that one pager but i i think i don't we haven't done that in a while, and I'm not that interested in redoing that. So it would be May that it, it doesn't need to be done any earlier than that. Um, but if you want to nominate someone else, make sure they'll accept the nomination. And to um, talk about the May meeting, it would be just that. You know, oh, right. Because we don't have we, we'll we'll deciding to the yeah. first little bit because he was our chair. Sure. And then uh, once the chair is elected, then takes over obviously right. it's technically we'll, oh, sorry. oh just because if you read the code it says it expires and it expires before the new one is selected so yeah um just wanted to point out too uh, on that note julie and tom and i thank you both mm -hmm. have been interviewing uh prospective members we have we got five applications which has been great so we'll finish that up and then we'll We'll have more information about that in the coming month. Okay. Have you done a youth report? Yeah, I do. Let me pull it up. Okay, so I wanted to talk about the importance of having walkable communities and like walking, I mean, walking, biking, and access to public transport in a community and why it's important for youth members. And I'd say a big factor of this is because most most youth people do not have driver's license or access to cars. And this can be demonstrated by the figure that 25% of 16 year olds had licenses in 2021, which is a significant decrease from 46% in 1983. And having more walkable cities with public transit access will allow youth to get where they need to go more efficiently, which um, in today's age is really important because a lot of youth have extremely diverse extracurriculars and jobs that they need to do. So um, having easier walking and biking and public transit access will make um, 
the youth role in a community a lot easier to fulfill. And then walking is also beneficial to the climate, which we were talking about today, because it, of course, reduces cars on the road. And it can also be beneficial to the mental health of youth because walking outside is a good way to de-stress um, after school and stuff like that. So yeah, that's it. Pretty short. Well, that's an interesting statistic from the drop from 83. Uh, sorry, from yeah, 19, 1983 it was 46%. And now as of 2021, it's 25%. Yeah. Mm. Curious how much of that is a cost factor because like used cars like went up, like skyrocketed in price. Yes, that was also during COVID, so like driving schools were having issues. But I know like a lot of my friends, like they're not getting their licenses by mm -hmm. the time they're turning 16. They're either waiting till they have the opportunity to, or some of them are just like, I don't want to take the test, or like it's just so hard to find time and schedules to actually get through the process of getting a license. Yeah, I mean, I didn't take mine until. We said we have one friend who's 26, and another friend's got someone who's 21, and neither of them have the license. When I was in school, like everybody had a car. It was unheard of not yeah, to have that. Yeah. When my son was in college, it's like if they had one car amongst five of them, they're fine. You know, oh. so they just hold the concept of having a car. Ties into that maybe statistic. Yeah, and that's good for climate change, mm -hmm. right? And people a lot more aware now. Yeah. In 1961, rush hour for driving into the high school was about five minutes. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> and, that might have changed. <laughs> and, and in order to have a car, uh, you had to have the money, which required to have a job and Many of us who went to junior and senior, uh, we would have a car because we had jobs after school and we had to be able to get there and yeah. couldn't depend on parents who were working. So it was probably higher then. I, I don't know. You probably don't have those statistics on 1961. <laughs> but um, I can tell you after school at Issaquah High School, uh, when I sold my car, if it got past five o'clock at night, I got really worried that there would be uh, traffic on the Hobart Road that would give me a ride home if because I was hitchhiking. Oh, mm -hmm. And now, now I don't think they have to worry about that traffic. <laughs> on the anyway, more information than you wanted, but uh, I get it that the statistics are dropping. Yeah, I think it's also due to expense of a vehicle um, and expense of insurance. So uh, yes. I totally get that. All right, well, good meeting. I think we're ready to adjourn. I have uh, oh. one other business slash. I'm sorry. That's all right. Any other business, <laughs> right. We'll Item six, yes. other business announcements. Um, this is this popped up today, actually. So um, this is for your all for y'all's interest. Uh, so King County's uh, Target Zero program, which is basically the state of Washington's Vision Zero equivalent program, uh, they deployed a smart sign today on Front Street going south. Um, background: The city applied for the program, and Front Street was, to our surprise, one of their top four scoring locations in the entire county. So we got it immediately. We weren't even sure if we were going to get it at all. Um, so these signs detect speeds, which not much of it's front street, uh, but also phone usage and seatbelt use. And if it detects people on their phone or without a seatbelt, it'll say, get off your phone or put a seatbelt on or whatever it says. So it says it uh, on the sign. It says it on the sign. <laughs> yeah. So okay. it'll, it's going to collect that data. and The city will have that data at the end of the uh, pilot program in four to four to eight weeks. They haven't well. told us for yeah, pretty pretty cool. Could it be a uh when when that does get back, could that be an addendum to a lot of the agendas? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Are people still not wear their seatbelts? That's a good question. Plus, look at it. My mom did like the ads in 
these were sort of prison officers. <laughs> like had the cheesy, like the I don't know, you'd see it on in front of a cop car, like get her ticket, like back when it like had just been made illegal to not wear your seatbelt. Uh, it's apparently enough to integrate it into a sign like this. So, well, wow. yeah. I think Dave had his hand up too. No, oh, Dave, go ahead. Dave. You're muted. You're muted. Dave, we can't hear you. <laughs> Sorry about talking so much tonight. I just would like to share uh, one thing. In May, uh, I will leave the King County Veterans Advisory Board after 18 years. Oh, wow. wow. And you'll be a veteran of the Veterans Advisory Board? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Feels like it, too. Um, anyway, uh, it's been my great pleasure to serve. Uh, on the King County Veterans Advisory Board for 18 years from the city of Issaquah and uh, um, helping a lot of, I, I think you guys know about the King County Veterans Seniors Human Services Levy, and I'm on that oversight board as well. So uh, it's been an honor and a privilege to be able to serve and uh, uh, watch the county uh, grow and do things for veterans and uh, uh, veterans in our own community. So I'm excited to, uh, uh, to be leaving and watch what they're going to do in the future. But uh, I've seen vast improvements. So i um, grateful for that opportunity. And I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you. Thanks for sharing and thanks for your service. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I mean it this time. I think we're ready to adjourn. Unless there's any more announcements? Yeah. If, oh, sorry. <laughs> just for the public knowledge, uh, fifth LD uh, representatives, like your state representatives, are having a town hall on April 2nd, so Tuesday, mm -hmm. at Gibson Hall uh, across from Fish Factory, mm -hmm. uh, starting at 6 30. And when's that again? That's uh, Tuesday the 2nd, 6 30. That's next Tuesday. To 7 30. Mm -hmm. Session update, questions, with the audience. Hmm. Thanks. Now I'm afraid to try to close the meeting. <laughs> 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 okay, last well, one. Okay, thanks you guys. Great meeting. We're adjourned. Thank you. Have a good week. Good I think we just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.